In this segment of It's About Money, we'll be talking to Andrea Caruso, founder of Sensational in Survival. Hang in there and watch the show. Welcome to another edition of It's About Money. I'm Nanette Nokon and thank you for joining us. Today we have a wonderful program for, uh, from a very successful and wonderful and inspiring lady, Andrea Caruso. She founded an organization called Sensational in Survival, also known as SIS, right? S-I-S. Yes. So tell me how you founded uh, this organization. And it, was sort of a, it was sort of a work in progress, and I know that they tell you that necessity is the mother of invention, and it's probably never been more true than the start of this. I had breast cancer three years ago. I was diagnosed, went through the surgery, the chemo, the radiation. Um, I'm an RN at Rochester General in labor and delivery. And of course your disability lasts a certain amount of time and as it started to wean, my treatment was still three months out. And when you go through treatment, you are at risk for infection. So to work in a hospital would have been very risky. Mm -hmm. I also just didn't feel that great going through all the treatments and didn't really feel good enough to go back to work. And so as the money started to dwindle and I still had time to be out and couldn't work, I, I just was starting to get you know, afraid and nervous. And my family's all in California and my sister paid my mortgage for four months. She oh basically said, I can't physically be there with you, but I can at least make you be at peace while you're going through this and not be worrying about, you know, because I was doing the whole, do I go back in between chemo and radiation? Maybe I can take a break between chemo and radiation, work a little while. And, it, and she just said, let me do this for you. So from that, um, I, you know, a few people had uh, kind of come up with the idea to do a breast cancer survivor calendar. Mm -hmm. And from that, the proceeds from that, I wanted to give to an organization that did what my sister did for me, and I couldn't find one. Uh, I found plenty for research and prevention and education, which is wonderful, because I'd love to see the disease disappear off the face of the earth. But when I couldn't find one, another very challenging friend said, so start your own. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, why not? And then we'll just start and grow. And we found out from the, the hordes of women that have been contacting us by Googling financial breast cancer assistance or uh, funding that there's a big need out there, um, a, a pocket of dealing with breast cancer that hasn't been met that we've seen um, you know, in other agencies. And so that's all we do is help them pay their bills. I see. Very nice. So, so you actually started this organization while you were going through your own Well, course. actually, I had the idea to do a survivor calendar. It, mm -hmm. The idea came from a friend of mine who is the warm-up comedian for the David Letterman Show. His name's oh. Eddie Brill. Okay. And he asked, I run the New York City Marathon every year, and we do this as a fundraiser now. And he asked how the race went, and I sent him a picture of the finish line with no hair. And he basically said, you need to find 11 other women that, you know, that punched back at this disease and do a calendar. And he, I think he was half joking and I thought, oh my gosh, that's a great idea. <laughs> so I t reached out to just a handful of women I knew at the time. And actually the first person who came on board was Lisa Abbott who lives here in Penfield mm -hmm. also. And she, um, and I thought if this woman doesn't tell me I'm crazy and go away, I, th I think we should try to do this and get more women. And we found women very easily, but we were sort of behind the gun for that year time-wise. Uh, so we went ahead and had the calendar made, and then the proceeds, we were, as we were deciding what we were going to do with the proceeds, uh, we realized that what we needed to do was create our own so we would be the outlet to help women, as my sister did. So in coming up with the name, we focused on SIS okay. for my sister. And then we basically feel, too, that we're kind of the big sister to other women that my sister was to me. I see. Isn't that wonderful? So. That's great. Well, you know what? It's a real shot in the arm, to be honest, for me. I didn't, I didn't expect to get as much out of this as I'm getting. And by that, I mean, which could sound, you know, goofy, but by that, I mean, I feel like I'm able to take a swing back at breast cancer mm -hmm. when it tried to take a big swing at me. Mm -hmm. And I'm finding out the women I've met everyone, it, breast cancer is this insidious, unpredictable thing, whether it's, you know, it, you don't know the age, even the gender, 2,000 men get it a year, a man is in the 2007 calendar. Um, you don't know uh, 
where it's going to hit, when it's going to hit. You could have no family. Most women have no family history that are getting diagnosed. Age doesn't matter. The first calendar had a 23-year-old on the cover. Um, there's so many things you can't predict about it um, that you know. We I realized that the the fullness of, of women that were coming that were coming forward all had different stories, um, but all of them were very similar in mm -hmm. that they were just very strong, vibrant, I want to kick this disease women. Mm -hmm. And they helped us propel the calendar and get the organization going. So it might have started with my little thought, but it, it definitely has been propelled by all the women that are jumping on board and helping. So. That's great. It sounds like, so are most of the members from our, from our community in Rochester? Um, yes. Okay. Mo the calendar of the first year was all women from Rochester. The second year, um, I had the God-given fortune to meet Cindy Bell from Syracuse through someone in New York City that didn't know I was from upstate and said, oh, a friend of mine is a, is a survivor and she's a photographer. And I said, oh, I need one for my next project, which we were ready to do the next calendar now. And he said, oh, too bad, she's way up in Syracuse. And I said, I'm way up in Rochester. So turns out we were going through the same thing at the same time, a, a city apart. Mm -hmm. And we met by phone, talked for an hour, and her ideas are similar to mine. She experienced some hardship too, being a commercial photographer, freelance photographer. Uh, many people were being, you don't know what someone's going through. You think you're doing the, the thoughtful thing. So a lot of businesses and work that she was getting, entities that she was getting work from, thought, oh, well, Cindy's going through breast cancer, so maybe we should like give, them, give this project to someone else while she's going through this, and it mm -hmm. almost crippled her business. Sure. So uh, when friends that had businesses that gave her a lot of work found out about it, th these women sort of women-owned businesses corralled around her and were funneling business to her to keep her afloat. So when I talked with her about my financial hardship, which was much different than hers, but, mm -hmm. but similar, mm -hmm. due to breast cancer, she was, you know, all over wanting to be part of this. So it's branched out, not intentionally necessarily, it's just sort of by the growth, the need, the talents that want to come forward and help. Mm -hmm. um, but we do help this community first, mm -hmm. uh, and then we branch out to New York, all of New York State, and then the rest of the United States. Yes. We've helped women in 25 different states. Oh, wow. <clears throat> but again, the majority, the large majority, has been um, Monroe County and outlying counties just outside of Monroe. Um, and again, it's just to help them pay their bills once they've, you know, verified that they've gone through this this ordeal mm -hmm. and that it has caused financial hardship. I see. And that's pretty much the criteria. You mentioned something really interesting there that you're right, most people would perceive it as a way to give someone relief instead of giving them work to do. Oh. But in fact, it's doing the opposite. Right. Because if you need the cash flows, like somebody who's self-employed, oh, yes. it creates such a devastating effect. And it's not just, I mean, I waitressed my way through nursing school and I never had any disability insurance or any, uh, any means that if this had hit me then mm -hmm. to take care of it. I'm a single mom and it would have been devastating and it has been to many women. There are students as young as, you know, in their 20s that were devastated by it. Uh, their employee, employee, fellow employees have had fundraisers and things for them, but they really haven't had anything to fall back on to sustain them through this time. Mm -hmm. And it, you don't, everybody handles someone else's hardship differently. Sure. Uh, some people make the phone call, show up, bring the groceries, make a meal. Other people maybe are more uncomfortable with that, mm -hmm. but there's plenty of a, a car, if a card in the mail, you know, um, anything that lets people know you're thinking of them can be a help. Um, it's difficult for people to take financial assistance. Mm -hmm. It's difficult to let anybody know. Uh, the social worker where I got treatments, when she found out about our organization, she said, Andrea, I, I, why didn't you let me know that you were having some difficulty? I said, well, I didn't really have difficulty for long because my sister jumped in. Mm -hmm. But you know many women don't have those sisters in their lives. And she, so the social workers from the cancer clinics are who give us most of the patients that, that need help. I see. Oh, that's great. So you built that network yeah. in terms of yeah. identifying the women yes. who might need help. Yes, so with all fantastic. the cancer clinics, you know, and it could be, you know, it's ebbs and flows. We give out money as we raise it. I see. We have low ebbs, and we're on a fundraising push right now. Um, we have some events coming up. We have another calendar coming out, and the calendars are at uh, Wegmans, six Wegmans in Rochester, and three in Syracuse, many outlets and salons and gyms and stores, and people just saying, you know, give me 20, let me sell them, and sure. it's
it's been our biggest fundraiser so far. We've had some government grants, Senator Alisi, oh. uh, Robach. We've just people have been so incredibly generous. Um, because with one in seven women, they're saying, getting diagnosed, Is that right? it would be very hard for someone to not have a sister, a mother, you know, a wife, a daughter, mm -hmm. that, that this disease hasn't, you know, hit their life because of, you know, having that many women in your life. Sure. And actually, it's a nice boost in morale and just uh, oh. the general feeling, well-being, if somebody's there, you know, that you could get some help if that oh. financial If you could burden. take that stressor <clears throat> off of you, I mean, everything you read says with any cancer that if you can alleviate stress, if you can, um, that it has a direct relationship to your immune system and the immune system has a direct relationship to cancers and the malfunctioning of your immune system. There's a lot of information out there about that and, you know, just, you know, taking a breath and breathing and calming and getting enough sleep and taking your vitamins isn't enough if you wake up and wonder if your car is going to be in the driveway when you get up or if your house is going to be taken from you, which is very real. This has happened to women. Um, it's every, we've helped with everything from lymphedema sleeves, you know, for the swelling you get after a mastectomy um, to paying their utilities, um, transportation, co-pays. Some um, HMOs charge co-pays for each visit that you go. Uh, radiation can be every day for six weeks, five mm -hmm. days a week. If you are paying 15 to $20 every time you go in, that, that could cripple some households. So um, there's a lot of costs, a lot of expenses. You don't realize that if you were even, your, if your income dropped even slightly, it could, it could put you in harm's way financially. And I don't know how you get by with, uh, without any stress when that happens. You sure. know, it certainly didn't, it wasn't that for me. I was stressing out about that, and my sister knew it and could hear it in my voice. And she, she was there, too. Oh, and, yeah. And how wonderful you took that as an inspiration to do oh, something. Oh, it was. I thought, oh, what it, like I said, I, I used to cry twice when I'd get a check. I'd, I'd think, oh, there's my mortgage. And then I thought, what does a woman do who's standing here right now in my place with no check in her hand? Mm. What does she do? Sure. You right, know? right. That's fantastic. Well, I, I just admire what oh. you've done. How long ago did you find found the organization? Well, I was diagnosed in 2004. Mm -hmm. I had taken a, a travel nursing job in, at NYU in New York City briefly, and uh, they required a physical. And even as a nurse and someone who had thyroid cancer six years ago, I hadn't updated my mammograms. And that's my message to everyone to update your mammograms and don't think that just because you have no family history that it won't um, come into your life. So I was working at NYU, they required a physical. I was on the fence about having them do it or my doctor, Dr. Kerper here in Rochester. And I thought, oh, I haven't been to him in a while. He nudged me and let me know I hadn't been to him in a while. And he said, let's just do a full physical and you know take care of that for now. And he sensed something was wrong. He couldn't quite feel a lump, but he sensed something was wrong. Mine was very close to the chest wall, hard to find. Mm -hmm. And he said, I'm not going to sign your release to go back there and work unless you get your mammogram updated. And he kind of knew how to have me over a barrel and make me go <laughs> do it. Mm -hmm. And I did, not even thinking. I thought, eh, it's nothing. And it was something. And I, of course, tried to bargain with my doctors and said, well, can I go do my nursing stint for a few weeks and come back? You know. <laughs> They were like, no, Andrew, you have breast cancer, dear. You need to take care of this. And so it's very easy to be in denial. Mm -hmm. It is very easy. Even being in the medical field, mm -hmm. having had a cancer before, um, being at the time I was 45, uh, 40, 45, and, you know, I had all those things, you know, that, I, that should have made me know better mm -hmm. to get my mammograms updated, and I still didn't do it because I thought I had thyroid cancer, I had surgery, I had radiation, and I did my... I did my dance card with cancer, mm -hmm. you know, I'm done. Mm -hmm. And that even allowed me to think that I probably, I think I thought that I was exempt and it wouldn't happen to me again. Mm -hmm. And that's another message I guess I want to make is that um, we're our own health advocates. Nobody um, comes along and knocks on your door <clears throat> and says, you know, have you updated your mammogram lately? You mm -hmm. know, have you gotten your physical done? Are you taking your vitamins? Sure. Um, we have to be our own stewards of our own health because nobody is going to do it for us. And the key to surviving for a very long time with breast cancer is early detection. It is the primary thing. It is what the organizations that do research and education, it's why they're so important because that is what saves lives, is, mm -hmm. is early detection and, and treatment right away. Right. So important to, to pay attention, like you said, be good oh. stewards of our own bodies. Yeah. So. Yeah. Or we have a man on this 
2007 calendar, because 2000 men, again, I said, uh, get it every year. It was his wife saying, get in there, you have a lump. It, no, it's not an infected hair follicle. It's not a, you're a man, but men get breast cancer. And he credits his wife in his little story mm -hmm. of saving his life. Mm -hmm. And he lived to see his daughter go down the aisle. And he lived to see his grandchild born. And he credits her for that because um, one of the reasons uh, that men actually have a slightly higher, they have there are very few numbers, but a slightly higher mortality rate is because it can get dismissed and blown off and, and, and thought that it's something else. I see. What so you mean. even if you're a family member and you know something, someone is not, you can nudge them, mm -hmm. suggest, notes on the fridge, mm -hmm. you know, you can't have the keys to the car till you go get your mammogram, <laughs> anything. <laughs> right, right, right. Keep an eye on each other. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's great. That's wonderful. We'll take a quick break. We'll, we're talking with Andrea Caruso, founder of Sensational in Survival, and we'll be right back. What do I call it a funny bone? Why can't penguins fly? I can see safety. Can we go to the moon on vacation? If you think it's tough answering these questions, imagine the ones you'll get if your child is diagnosed with cancer. CureSearch.org can help. It's run by doctors and scientists whose research has led to an overall cure rate of 78%. You're not as alone as you feel. What would you like to say to AJ and Heather? Um, that I love them a lot and that I'm going to miss them. They're not going anywhere. I know, but I am. Where are you going? Back to Atlanta. You can always look at One day, you were simply struggling to be a dad. The next, you're coping with a diagnosis of childhood cancer. CureSearch.org can help. It's run by doctors and scientists whose research has led to an overall cure rate of 78%. You're not as alone as you feel. Back. I'm Nanette Noka, and it's about money. Thank you for tuning in. Our guest today is Andrea Caruso, founder of Sur Sensational in Survival. Thank you again for being here. Oh, thank you for having me. Really. You're such a burst of energy, and it's so oh. inspiring for a lot of women. Oh, so Thank you. I, you. You meet breast cancer survivors, and there's, like I think, a common thread amongst that is that they feel very, very passionate about what they've been through and what they can do to help once they made it through. Mm -hmm. And it's nice that people actually, there are a lot of women who talk about it. Oh, and then it's yes. nice that the bonding forms and people want to help oh, each yes. other out. It has been, it, well, it surprised me, but it was a nice surprise that most women, you have things done, you have surgery, you have reconstruction, you've lost your hair, you've got a wig on. And I can't tell you how many women that, you know, I've met and in a very short time we're, you know, in the bathroom showing each other our work and what's been done and, <laughs> and, and going, oh, really? What did he do there? And I, it, but it's funny. This, I never it's thought bond, of that. Oh, it's a bond that you would not believe. And where did you get your wig? Lift it up. How much hair is coming in? You know, it's, it really is a common denominator that just puts you, because when you strip all that stuff away, you know, body image and uh, what you've been through and you're so grateful for life and grateful for getting through and grateful for being done with chemo and being able to eat normal again and you, it puts things in a different place in the cupboard and I think it, it orders it, it puts it in a better order I think is the best way I could describe it and I notice a lot of other women feel the same way, what's worth worrying about, what's worth um, having in your life or mm -hmm. not in your life anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you know, one of the girls' quotes in here is, you just don't sweat the small stuff anymore. Sure, absolutely. <laughs> and uh, it does. It puts it in perspective. That's great. No, so it's so inspiring that you are able to provide financial assistance to women. Now, what kind of financial assistance would be, you mentioned, like, a wig. Is that something that you help? We funded with? wigs. Uh -huh. We have a, a local um, provider of wigs. Her name's Sherry Schaefer, and she is the owner of Alternative Hair. She has a salon, but then she suffers from alopecia, which her hair comes and goes. And as a hairdresser, that was devastating. Um, she's actually right here in Penfield, too. Yeah. Um, and I was had been friends with her for 10 years and then went through my ordeal and said, I, 
I'm going to have to become a hair club member of Sherry's because I'm going to lose my hair. And I had three wigs lined up on my dresser before I even lost one hair because I'm one of those that doesn't get out of bed without lipstick on. <laughs> so <laughs> I needed to have hair ready to go. And she was just so wonderful having lost it herself. It wasn't due to cancer, but all of the cancer clinics have her number and they refer patients. And she's sensitive enough to uh, book women with nobody coming in, in or around their appointment time because they might be there without hair and not and she uh, goes, you know, a whole consult with them and, and fits it to them and cuts it to them when it comes in and just really saves their, I said their vain sanity, I told her, I said you saved my vanity, but really if you can put that aside and just concentrate on getting healthy and not think people are looking at you weird, you just, some women, I got, I love that they can go out in a bandana or a bald head and it's their badge of honor of look what I'm fighting and that's great. Mm -hmm. I wanted to kind of slide into the woodwork and not let anybody look at me for any other reason than just, you know, who I was normally. Mm -hmm. um, and everyone's different and is entitled to deal with this in whatever way. And Sherry helps those that want to just have the wig and be incognito. and. Uh, she was definitely instrumental in that. So we helped fund that. If someone comes to her and can't afford it, she refers them to us. Mm -hmm. um, the financial assistance we give right now is in the form of $250, $500 grants. We've paid an, an $800 uh, radiation copay bill. We, um, uh, you know, so we, we play it by year. 500 is usually the gauge. And yes. we've, we've given out repeated ones once everybody has been helped that's on the list the first time. Of course, we're looking for funding all the time if mm -hmm. someone wants to. We have many uh, people giving fundraisers just, uh, we've had many companies that have said, we want to do this fundraiser or a dress down day. We've had fashion shows, a like Girl Scout in Ontario mm -hmm. had a fashion show. And she earned a badge having a fashion show. Mm -hmm. um, the people have been so thoughtful, and we kind of want to invite that neighborhood, come up with something. We'll, we'll help you help people, you okay. know. Okay. So if anybody has any ideas out there and you want to throw them our way, they can go to our website. At, it's www.sensationalinsurvival.org. And uh, we, we take all ideas because it's it's community helping their community, sure, which absolutely. is wonderful. Yeah. Absolutely. Now, who, is there a staff that runs the organization? There are. It's all volunteer, okay. and it's pretty much our board. I see. We have one part-time office staff person mm -hmm. um, that fields the applications, processes them, contacts them, lets them know where they stand, uh, and and writes out the check. You know, well, doesn't write them out, but you know, gets that process going where they're going to receive a check. I see. And and uh, we have a committee that assesses, you know, who the who it's going to go to and how, because funds get low all mm -hmm. the time. And then when we sell a lot of calendars, we are able to help more women. And then so there's ebbs and flows, and we're trying to balance out the fundraising so that year round we have something to give these the uh, women that are contacting us. So I see. So um, is it the board that looks through the applications yes, to see how yeah, to prioritize? There's a, there's a committee okay. um, that looks through the applications and decides. Um, you know, the, it's it's first come first serve serve according to need. So if there's a crisis situation and children or a woman might be homeless, which has mm -hmm. happened, mm -hmm. uh, one woman contacted us and had to leave where she was living, go into a shelter, but there wasn't, it was a women's shelter and her kids had to go to two separate other shelters oh, dear. while she tried to get on her feet. Mm -hmm. So there are those, those situations out there and we'd love to keep that from happening, especially if they're just going to be on hard times during their treatment. Sure, right. You know, um, we want them to be able to stand up on their feet and help yes. themselves. But this interim period is where you're there. Yes, yeah. and we, uh, Cindy Constantino, is an attorney on the board, and uh, there's also you know legal efforts sometimes to, and we've had other other attorneys offer to call maybe a company on their behalf and try to uh, get their the, the their debt you know, stayed for a while until they can get on their feet. I There's see. a lot of things you can do to financially help. Um, if we can find, uh, let's say, um, one woman wanted, uh, she didn't have long to live and her children were teenagers and she wanted a portrait done of her to give her husband, of she and her kids. Mm -hmm. And she didn't have the money for that. So we were able to pay a utility bill that allowed them to get this portrait. I see. See what I mean? So I we, we don't, that's not the thing we're looking for, but if if they're having trouble because they can barely make ends meet and keep food on the table to even in her end of life afford something like that, mm -hmm. um, those are the situations that, you know, that will 
uh, bump somebody to the front of the line, but it, but again, it's out of it's out of it, they're in a crisis situation. Mm -hmm. Other than that, it like I said, it's first come first serve Monroe County, mm -hmm. New York State, mm -hmm. you know, and then into the uh, once when we end up having money raised from the calendar or grants or money coming in from the the great fundraisers that people are doing, mm -hmm. we we can you know, wipe out the whole list in New York State and then go on and help everybody that we possibly can. But yeah, That's great. So you just um, need to get the word out to have more people yeah, trying to come together. Yeah, more people donate. We're going to, I'm going to be doing the New York City Marathon again on November 4th. Okay. I go slower and slower every year. Mm -hmm. um, but my only goal is to finish with a pulse and to not be the one bringing in the orange cones at the end. <laughs> so... <laughs> Oh, is that right? Oh, I see, because it's... Oh, yeah. <laughs> Actually, we, we've got a few minutes here. Can we look at the calendar? Yes, yes. I brought it just in case. This one, that was Cindy Bell's idea. Um, it's called Walk in My Shoes. These are actually her shoes. And we ah. did it of survivors. Um, I don't know if I can hold this up right. That's Cindy Bell right there. Uh -huh. And we did it all survivors. Um, Rita is from Rochester. Oh, she, I see. So, show the shoes. Yeah, she likes uh, crazy fancy shoes I and then see. a little bit about herself. This next year's calendar um, is going to be sort of conceptual as well. Um, and the stories and quotes are just out of this world. Um, Alec Baldwin's mom is a survivor. She started Carol Baldwin Foundation in Syracuse. She's from Long Island originally. And she's on this next next calendar. Oh, nice! Um, so we do have a, a Syracuse component, but it's still mostly Rochester. I see. Um, this gentleman is from Syracuse, and yes, this shows you that gentlemen get breast cancer. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. she's this is a doctor in Syracuse who was one of those like me. Oh, it can't happen to me. I'm in the medical field. That doesn't happen to us. Mm -hmm. um, and she is a retired French teacher from Rochester. <laughs> and. Lori is also from Rochester. She's a fellow nurse that I work with. I and she, we wanted to do walk in our shoes. She brought her Birkenstocks, sat her baby boy down, who she had to wean to go on chemo. And mm -hmm. he picked it up and started eating it like a sandwich. And I thought, oh, that's <laughs> cute. That was Cindy Bell's uh, good, good catch yeah. there on the photo oh, that's there. Interesting. And then Colleen is also from Rochester. And her children are, and her husband are just her inspiration. And so we got all of their shoes in this one. And Mary Ann is a dental surgeon here in Rochester, and she early detection is what saved her life. Mm. Early detection. She says that in her story. Michelle also from Rochester, and she's just fiery and has her uh, Volkswagen convertible that she wanted in the oh, picture. Oh, I see. She's ah. in the car. So she's hanging her feet out I the side see. of the car. I got um, it. And then Susanna, Susanna is from uh, Syracuse, very young, lots of family history, uh, and she's an equestrian. So her boots, of course, made her life. Mm -hmm. And then Barbara is from Syracuse and is a marathon runner and has run, clocked over 60,000 miles in just running for breast cancer. Mm -hmm. This is very close to my heart, being a runner also. That this is, this is I gotta say, is my favorite picture because she's got the beat up pink oh, shoes yeah. and it just it says so much to me. Um, Millicent is also from Syracuse. And then Catherine is from Rochester and she's a hairdresser and diagnosed, uh, she's 45, diagnosed also um, with some family history and thankfully to um, early detection, mm -hmm. you know, it really helped That's her. Great. So next year's theme is, it's a secret, it's coming out in three weeks and I'm bursting at the seams to show everyone. So, so the best thing to do is go to the website, yeah. www.sensationalinsurvival. Yep. Yep. We are setting up another uh, thing called, it's called Sis Helps. Dot com or helpsys.com and then I you can see. also get to the website that way. Oh, very nice, very nice. Well, thank you so much, thank you Andrea. So much. It's I just really a pleasure to have it. you here. I appreciate and, it. And um, thank you, our guests, for joining us in this edition of It's About Money. I hope you were able to pick up some ideas and maybe help a sister out there. Um, if you have any questions or concerns, email me at nnocon at awl.com. Until next time, we'll see you soon. Thanks for tuning in. If you have any questions, please email Nanette at nnocon at aol.com. Following production was produced through Penfield Community Television in Penfield, New York.